Did you know Nano Banana is fantastic for creating stylized images like these? So in this tutorial, I'm going to break down the exact workflow and prompts I use to create this so you can apply it to your own work. So let's get started. So the first thing we need in order for this to work is some sort of reference image. You can literally grab a stylized image online or you could generate one directly in here. So that's what we'll do. So for our first stylized image, I want to create some sort of watercolor look. So what I'm going to do is generate an image of a watercolor painting and this is important i say keep it loose and gestural and the reason we're doing this is so it's not a super rigid watercolor we want it to be literally loose we want it to look like a watercolor this is you know if you watch my previous videos when i talk about padding a prompt this is what i'm talking about just to give it a little bit more focus so i think this is awesome if you want and you're not happy with this you can go right here and do redo so i'll do that just for the sake of this tutorial and if you want you could even you know specify if you want it to be of a landscape or a piece of architecture and there we go so this one's a little bit better and now what i'm gonna do is grab a photo and this could be a rendering a photo of your project so i was on zillow and i was just grabbing some random houses so watch this i'm gonna right click copy this and i'm gonna paste it right into here and now i want this to basically be applied on that photo so same thing, I right click and I copy. And now this is how I tell Gemini to apply that. So I can say, make the first photo. So you can say first photo, input photo, photo of the house, right? You basically need to call upon that reference. Look like the reference photo art style. And you could say watercolor, um, you know, just to pad that, I could say watercolor style and then I'll send that off. So you can definitely experiment, but I found, you know, being clear about which is what, either first or second, or just saying what it is, helps it focus a little bit better. And there we go. So look at that. We've got this beautiful watercolor style. So overall, I love it. It's, it's super loose and gestural, but I don't like the dots everywhere. So this is why Nano Banana is so impressive because now I could say, can you remove the random splatter and dots. So this is the important thing because of how intelligent this is. You can have a conversation with it. It's not one and done. You can actually iterate on this. And that's why I've been loving this tool so much because it makes it so much easier for me to actually get the results I want. And there we go. Like this is beautiful. So let me bring up the photo of the house and look at that. The other reason Nano Banana is so incredible is it actually respects the form of the architecture. You know, any designer knows we can't just be changing the form of our project just to make it look pretty, right? If you're having a lot of fun with Nano Banana and you need some extra guidance, I actually wrote a free prompt guide. I have a link in the description below. Basically break down the strategy of how you should be prompting and I give you a lot of use cases as well as examples of before and after. So be sure to check that out. Again, totally free. Link in the description and let's get back to the video. Let's try a different style. So what I like to do is I always do a new chat. That way there's basically like no memory. I don't want anything to like kind of clutter things. So I'm going to go over here and hit new chat. Okay. Then I'm going to ask it to do some sort of like pen style. So generate an ink illustration and I'll say loose and gestural, like an architect sketch. So if you've ever seen an architecture sketch, you know, it's got like those signature wavy lines. Again, the whole point is to basically create concept art. So we don't need to manually do this. So there we go. We've got, you know, the looseness I'm digging it. So I'm going to grab this and apply it to a photo. So let's just check out the house real quick and let's see if we can get an interior view, maybe like a kitchen. It's perfect. So I'm going to right click this, copy it. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to grab the sketch, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. And now if I want just to show you another way of prompting, I can say apply the second photos sketch style to the first photo of the kitchen. And there we go. So overall, it looks beautiful. I mean, it did a fantastic job maintaining everything. And now I even got text, right? Text and the splatter. So again, up to you if you want the splatter or not, or the text. But again, 
Nano Banana is smart. So let me give it three things to try and confuse it. I want to remove the splatter, the beige background, and the text. So watch this. Turn the beige background to be white and remove the splatter and ink drops. All right, so that's three things. And there we go. There's no fool in the banana. Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm a little speechless because it was like, it did that in no time. And I'm thinking like, oh, if I were to do this in Photoshop, it would take me a while. So crazy that like we literally have like one click like filters in a way, just based off of a random image. So now once it's in a good spot, you do have the choice of downloading it, right? You could hover, download full size, or you can keep iterating. So if I want, I could say, remove all the color, make it monochrome. And this is just to keep it super simple. Again, some clients might like just the simple line work. Like one thing we've noticed is, you know, if you do something too early with like textures and everything, it can definitely scare people. So here we're still seeing all the textures and everything. You know, it's not the banana's fault. I did say make it monochrome, but let's say remove all textures and make it more conceptual. And let's see if we can go even further. And there we go. It's basically a line drawing. So that's great. Like early on, if you're just talking about like layouts and everything, this is exactly what you need. You know, these are beautiful and everything, but you know, you don't want to scare someone off with like this very bold, you know, type of a uh, tile and everything. So that's our second style. And now let's try one more style. And what I'm going to do is actually use a reference photo that I found online instead of creating a synthetic one. So let's go over to new chat. And I'm going to go over to Google and I search for architect sketch. I'm going to grab this. This is a really beautiful drawing and I'm going to drop this in. And now let's find another image of this house. Let's go with some of these finishes are just so gross, but let's go with this foyer. This is pretty cool. So now I've got the sketch first and I have the photo second. So now it's important that you're targeting these correctly. So I could say, and I'm going to be vague again, we're just pushing it, apply the reference photo sketch style to the photo of the foyer. So although they're flipped, right? I am able to pad the prompt to give it a little bit more definition and detail. So it knows exactly what I'm talking about. And there we go. Look at that. That is very cool. So now I think it's a little too defined in terms of the, uh, the line work, you know, here. Yeah. I want it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit looser. So let's see if we can keep doing that. So let's say make the line work looser, more like an architectural sketch lines should be a little wavy and let's see what they do. Got a little bit better, but not exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try redoing it one more time and let's see what it does. Yeah, this is slightly better. Yeah, now we have two different options. You can see that one and two. Yeah, it got a little bit better, but not perfect. So since that's not working too well, what I can do is I can actually edit my prompt and kind of create a new branch. So let's say if I don't want to target the line work and I just want to edit the sketch, like edit details, watch this. I can say, remove the table in the center of the foyer. And we can actually make edits and then it'll update. And so anything that came after it's basically branched off and you're starting from scratch from there. So it's nice that you kind of have this thread and that's why I like to do like one sketch per chat. That way I'm not muddying up the chat. And there we go. And it did a good job blending all this and everything. Like it does look pretty, pretty good. That's awesome. And then you could go even further and ask it to, you know, add artwork or something. So let's say, add a picture frames to the right wall and there you go so it's a little bit off center but i bet we could ask it to modify that but anyways you know in this video i want to give you some examples of the different styles you could do and how to modify it i think the the whole stylized part of this is really fun and exciting and i feel like no other tool does it this simply like i feel like in photoshop you would need some sort of like watercolor action and you'd have to pay like nine bucks for it but this it's all in here so anyways if you have any questions about this leave a comment i'll get back to you and as always please like and subscribe to the channel see you next time